Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Tourism and Hospitality Service Management, SOTHSM, Diploma, Postgraduate Diploma Programs. Diploma in Tourism Studies, DTS, TS2 Tourism Development, Products, Operations and Case Studies. Block 1 Understanding Tourists and Hosts. Unit 1 Profiling Foreign Tourists. 1.0 Objectives. After reading this unit you will be able to know what is meant by profiling of tourists. Understand the reasons behind profiling of tourists. Learn about the specific characteristics analyzed in profiling foreign tourists. Know about international tourist flows and world tourist arrivals. And familiarize yourself with high spenders and revenue earning countries in tourism. 1.1 Introduction When you meet an unknown person you do ask certain questions like which country or region s slash he comes from. What are the hobbies? What type of food is liked by her slash him etc. Similar queries would be there if a guest is expected. You raise such questions in order to better understand the person or to make his slash her stay more comfortable. Now imagine the situation in a service industry like tourism where every service segment must know in detail about the clients to be served. Here the profiling aspect becomes vital. This unit starts with defining the concept of profiling of tourists. It goes on to explain the aspects covered in the profiles of foreign tourists and how the profiling is done. It also examines the flows in international tourism along with a mention of highest earners and spenders of revenue in tourism. 1.2 Profiling of Tourists The sustained growth of any business slash service, including tourism, invariably involves product development according to market needs. A primary requirement in this regard is to understand the distinctive features of consumers and their preferences. It is also important in the context of tourism to establish effective communication with potential visitors for attracting them to the destination. The achievement of the same, however, involves the identification of specific segments of such visitors, their preferences and needs. Effective communication means to reach them and to know the geographical areas of their concentration. The statistical analysis of these factors in relation to any destination is known as the profiling of tourists. Tourists' profile also facilitates improvements in planning and deciding on development priorities, marketing strategies of tourism products, and services. Today, profiling is also helpful for understanding guest host relationships and tourism impacts. Regular visitor surveys are always necessary to obtain tourist profiles. Periodical surveys are also conducted with specific objectives. For example, the 1988-89 survey of international tourists in India was conducted keeping in view the following objectives. 1. To assess socio-economic and demographic particulars of international tourists. 2. To identify the factors influencing their choice of India as a place to visit. 3. To estimate the expenditure pattern of international tourists on various items like accommodation, food and drinks, entertainment, shopping and internal travel. 4. To identify the places visited by them and duration of stay and accommodation used at each place. 5. To assess preference for types of accommodation, tariff rates, various facilities and services. 6. To assess the levels of satisfaction of tourists in respect of various factors associated with tourism. 7. To work out a waiting diagram for construction of a consumer price index for international tourists. 8. To assess the demographic particulars of the transit tourists and identify the reasons for their not visiting India. The specific characteristics usually analyzed in profiling of tourists include the following. Place of residence. Age and sex. 
educational status economic activity status occupation purpose and frequency of visit and factors influencing the choice of destination the place of residence of a person is defined as that place where he has lived for most part of the past year 12 months or for a shorter period but intends to return to that place within 12 months to live in that place it is usually ascertained from the visitor through administrative documents like embarkation slash disembarkation cards or through surveys for the purpose of profiling age is always recorded in terms of completed years on the last birthday the educational status of a person refers to the highest level of education completed by him usually the visitors are classified into one of the following categories of educational status no schooling dot completed primary education completed secondary education completed university or college graduate studies and completed other studies the economic activity status of a person refers to his availability for productive work a person is said to be economically active if he is available for productive work all others are considered as non-economically active persons. A person is normally classified into one of the following economic activity status categories. Economically active. Greater than employed. Greater than unemployed. Non-economically active. Greater than students. Greater than homemakers. Greater than income recipients. Greater than others. The occupation of an economically active person refers to the kind of work in which he is engaged. It is generally decided on the basis of his status on the date of survey. The following groups of occupations are identified in visitor surveys. Legislators, senior officials and managers, professionals, technicians and associate professionals, clerks, Service workers and shop and market sales workers. Skilled agricultural and fishery workers. Crafts and related trade workers. Plant and machine operators and assemblers. Elementary occupations and armed forces. The marital status of a person is recorded as one of the following. Unmarried. Currently married. Divorced slash separated. Widowed. Dot. There could be several reasons for undertaking a trip by any person. However, there will be always one reason in the absence of which the visit would not have taken place. It is termed as the main purpose and is usually recorded as the purpose of visit in visitor surveys. All other reasons are termed as secondary purposes. Some visitors would be merely accompanying their elders without having any specific purpose of their own. The main purely pose of visit in such cases is taken to be that of the member whom they are accompanying. The purpose of visit is first classified into the following six major groups and then the specific activity within that group is slash pack slash funasi named during visitor surveys. Leisure, Recreation and Holidays Visiting friends and middle dot relatives. Business and professional. Health treatment. Religion slash pilgrimage and others. The intrinsic appeal of a place is often measured in terms of percentage of repeat visitors classified according to number of repetitions. The average number of visits per visitor calculated from such data constitute the frequency of visit. The choice of a destination for holiday and recreation is invariably influenced by a variety of factors including the perceptions of security, tourist appeal and costs about alternate destination choices. The identification of these factors in relation to each category of tourists is necessary to plan effective promotional strategies. 1.3 Profile of Foreign Tourists the demographic profiles of tourists visiting India are generally obtained from the disembarkation cards filled by them. However, the details relating to specific purposes of visit, 
factors of influence, etc. are obtained through foreign tourist surveys conducted periodically. 1.3.1 Country of Residence The primary tourist-generating markets of India are West Europe and North America. These two regions taken together accounted for about 55.9% of the total arrivals. During 1992 according to the country of residence, excluding the nationals of Pakistan and Bangladesh, the neighboring countries in South Asia is the next largest tourist-generating region for India. The region-wise tourist arrivals in India during 1992 according to country of residence are given in Table 1. Table 1 Region-wise tourist arrivals in India, 1992 region, tourist arrivals, and percentage. North America 1,95,652 Central and South America 11,069, 0.8%. West Europe 6,6160, 6 42.3%. East Europe 49,004. 3.4% Africa 70,131 4.9% West Asia 138,872 9.7% South Asia excluding Pakistan and Bangladesh 147,929 10.3% Southeast Asia 93,865 6.5% East Asia 86571 6.0 Australia 95484 Total 1434737 100% The top most tourist generating country for India is the United Kingdom UK followed by the United States of America USA the other important tourist generating countries are Germany, France, Sri Lanka, Japan, Italy, Canada, Commonwealth of Independent States, CLS, Singapore, Malaysia, United Arab Emirates, UAB, etc. The country wise breakup of tourist arrivals, which contributed at least 1% of the total arrivals. According to country of residence during 1992, is given in Table 2. Table 2. Two Ulster arrivals from major countries. 1992. Look at the screen. 1.3.2 Age. Predominantly, the international tourists visiting India are in the economically active age group of 25 to 54 years. They constituted over 70% of the total arrivals during 1992. The highest percentage of tourists, 26.8% were in the age group 25.34 years, followed by those in the age group 35.44. The age-wise distribution of tourists during 1992 is given in Table 3. Table 3, age-wise distribution of tourists, 1992 age group and percentage of tourists, 3 to 4 years minus 7.1%. 15 to 24 years minus 11 percent 25 to 34 years minus 26.9 percent 35 to 44 years minus 25.6 percent 45 to 54 years minus 18.0 percent 55 to 64 years minus 8.2 percent above 64 years 3.2 percent 1.3.3 sex the international tourist traffic to India is dominated by male tourists. The female tourists are only half of the male tourists. During 1992, the male tourists constituted 66% of the total arrivals. 1.3.4 Purpose of Visit Holiday and sightseeing is predominantly the main purpose of visit of foreign tourists visiting India and the percentage of such tourists has been increasing over the years. The second largest group is business tourists. During 1992, the purpose of visit of 75.9% tourists was holiday and sightseeing while that of 17.8% was business. The detailed breakup is given in Table 4. Table 4 
tourist arrivals according to purpose of visit, 1992 purpose of visit percentage. 1. Holiday and sightseeing minus 75.9%. 2. Business minus 17.8%. 3. Visiting friends and relatives minus 1.7%. 4. Study minus 1.1%. 5. Conference minus 0.3%. 6. Others minus 3.2%. 1.3.5 Occupation. The largest percentage of tourists visiting India are workers in production, sales and service sectors. Scientists and technicians constitute the second largest group followed by students. The distribution of tourists according to occupation during 1992 is given in Table 5 Table 5 Distribution of tourists by occupation 1992 occupation and percentage 1. Government Administrators and executives minus 7.4% 2. Entrepreneurs slash proprietors minus 9.0% 3. Scientists slash technicians minus 18.2%. 4. Workers minus 30.1%. 5. Students minus 13.7%. 6. Housewives minus 9.8%. 7. Others minus 11.8%. Total 100.0%. 1.3.6 Frequency of Visits. A good percentage of foreign tourists visiting India are repeat visitors. According to a survey conducted during 189-90, about 41.8% of the visitors during that year were repeat visitors. It consisted of about 13.8% who visited India eve times or more. The largest percentage of such tourists was from West Asia and Southeast Asia. The detailed breakup is given in Table 6. Table 6, Percentage Distribution of Tourists by Nationality and Number of Visits 1992 Look at the screen. 1.4198889 Survey Highlights The survey was conducted in 1988-89 at the behest of the Department of Tourism, Government of India, a market research firm specializing in holiday habits, recreation and leisure was commissioned for the job. The survey was based on split sampling design. The total sample size was 2,000 to 14,000 at the exit points, 5,000 in accommodation establishments and 2,000 transit passengers at the four international airports. Some of the highlights of the survey are as follows. 1. The pattern of arrivals indicated that 44.99% tourists come from Western Europe. 18.01% originated from Asian countries, 9.0% from USA and so on. 2. Occupation-wise about 42% international tourists comprised of scientists, doctors, executives and students. 3. Rigorous efforts should be made to capture more tourist traffic from the Pata region. 4. About 59.61% travel economy class in air travel. First class travel is namely by business people. 5. About 25.47% tourists' decision to visit India was because of friends and relatives' advice. 17.40 by general information, books, magazines, etc. 6. 58% of tourists visited for pleasure and 22% for business. The rest. Percentage being shared among visiting friends and relations, studies, conferences, and pilgrimage etc. 7. Beach tourism is popular with 31.12% giving their preference for that and 8.12% for hill resorts. But culture and history remain strong attractions. 8. The average stay for packaged tourists is 17.38 days and for non-packaged 31.11 days. 9. 
at all nationality average nearly 27% spent more than hours 1000 per day, 15% between hours 100-240, 12% between 250 to 400 etc. The highest spenders are from Australia, Germany and Japan. 10. About one third were not satisfied with cleanliness but are fascinated with the variety of foods available. 11. About one third said India lacks entertainment facilities and evenings are invariably dull. The majority of them were in favor of organizing cultural programs. 12. Among pleasure tourists, shopping is on the top of the list, etc. Hence, it is on the basis of such profiles that future planning and development takes place in tourism. 1.5 Habits, Hobbies etc. There are certain other aspects which need to be analyzed for attempting to understand the foreign tourists. Generally all of them are clubbed together in terms of perceptions about them or regarding their requirements. Well this may be the case in certain aspects like Attitude towards hygiene, security or punctuality, etc. They do differ in habits, tastes, hobbies, etc. These are related to specific cultures, attitudes, perceptions, regions, etc. For example cricket is a popular sport in England but not in US. Hence, it is possible that while selling a package tour in England, a one-day international taking place in India can form a part of the itinerary. But this may not be successful in US. Similarly, if one runs a library for the tourists the service would be considered good and utilized by many. More if times he is familiar with the popular authors of the regions from where the tourists are coming and Times their books are available in the library etc. A knowledge of the customs, history or politics of the visitor's country is also useful in tourism services. For example, a guide can give comparative commentary while describing a museum, monument or wildlife. This adds to the quality of the service. 1. 6 World Tourist Flows in fact tourism professionals must keep themselves updated on tourist movements and receipts and regional distribution of tourists. 1st June 2001 World Tourist Arrivals The world tourist traffic has been increasing at a steady pace from 25 million in 1950 to 476 million in 1992 except in 1982 and 1991 when there had been a marginal decline in the world tourist arrivals. Table 7 gives the tourist arrival figures from 1950 to 92. The percentage rate of growth in the last four decades has, therefore, been as described in Table 8. Table 8. Look the screen. With the base figure increasing, percentage of growth has naturally come down and the forecast for the present decade is a growth of 4% PA, which in other words, would mean that the world tourist arrivals will be in the region of 640 million by 2000 AD. Table 9 gives the numbers of international tourist arrivals in world's 15 top countries as per their ranking. Table 9, Tourism Destinations. International tourist arrivals, day visitors excluded. Look at the screen. 1st June 2002, Tourism Receipts. A tourist spends a sum of money while availing of the facilities at a destination. This is known as receipts from the tourists. World tourism receipts were 2.1 billion VS dollar in 1950. They have increased to 278.7 billion dollar in 1992. Tabling gives the details of the international world tourism receipts. Table 10. Year 
international tourism receipts million as dollar and percentage rate of change 1950 to 2100 12.58% 1961 to 6867 6.07% 1970 to 17900 6.55% 1980 to 122,400% 1985 to 115,424 5.89% 1990 to 255,074 20.98% 1992 to 29,635 13.80% the percentage rate of change during the four decades have, therefore, been as under 1951 to 60, 12.6, 1961 to 70, 10.1, 1971 to 80, 19.1, 1981 to 90, 10.6. 1991 to 2000, 10.00, forecast. The above figures are interesting in the sense that the tourism receipts have increased at a faster pace than the tourist arrivals. Table 11 gives the 15 top tourism spenders and Table 12 gives the 15 top earners. Table 11, Tourism Spenders. International Tourism Expenditure. International transport excluded. Look at the screen. 1st June 2003 Regional Distribution. During the last four years, there has been no major shift in the pattern of tourist movements as far as regions are concerned. Europe continues to attract the largest numbers, and the nature of tourist movement is intra regional. In fact, intra regional. Movements of tourists dominate the tourist flows in Europe and Americas with Southeast Asia picking up fast. East Asia and Pacific are being predicted as future tourism. Destinations Their receipts from tourism are increasing every year. Here one must remember that long-haul travel needs more money and longer. Holidays Compared to this short-haul travel is cheaper less time consuming and in a known environment hence tourists prefer to visit neighboring countries for example out of 100 canadians going overseas 75 percent go to us 2 to mexico and 12 percent to europe leaving the rest to others similarly 41 percent of americans confine their trips to canada and mexico 31% to Europe and Asia gets 10% only. 75% French tourists visit West European countries and 89% Germans. About 50% of Japanese tourists are confined to neighbor countries. Learning from this experience, we should do our best to encourage intra-regional travel in our part of the world also. Table 13 gives you the figures for the percentage of share of each region in world. Tourism. Table 13, percentage share of each region in world tourism. Look at the screen. 1.7 let us sum up. Profiling of tourists is vital to tourism development. Different components of the tourism industry use the profiles for planning, development, marketing improvements etc a proper understanding of tourists also helps in developing a better guest guest relationship same is the case in terms of world tourism trends generally profiling of foreign tourists is undertaken by government tourism departments however the private sector should also come forward in this regard 
Some large chains of hotels or tour operators etc. Conduct their own surveys for the same. You will read more about the utility of such profiles in marketing strategies in BLCCK7. Intraregional movement of tourists remains a strong trend in international tourism as compared to long haul travel. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.